in luxury, it is so easy to get caught up in the magnificence of the product. You know, this is made by this incredible designer, this incredible creative, by this incredible company. It's made in Italy, it's made in France, it's made in Germany, Japan, it's made on the West Coast. They are so creative, it's so beautiful, and it's perfectly understandable to be excited about the product and the service and the experience. I mean, after all, that is what we are doing in luxury. We're selling joy, we're selling beauty, we're selling access to another way of living. But if you run a small brand, independent brand, uh, one that you are um, creating and developing and growing, you better not get caught there. Uh, or what I should say is you shouldn't stay there because you're running a business. And while we're talking about beautiful products and services and experiences and all that that brings to our lives, there's so much more to running a business than focusing there. And that's what I wanna speak with you about in this video. The idea of making your luxury business work. I was at a luncheon and the luncheon was attended by luxury marketers and uh, many of the marketers were in hospitality and I remember this because I had written an issue of my newsletter uh, and back then the newsletter was called Flourish and it was all about this particular issue was all about how you can go to a luxury hotel and not experience luxury. So we were having conversations about that and, and um, uh, there were speakers who were addressing the audience and talking about the various ideas they had in luxury. And as I listened, I realized that I was not hearing what was so important to me as an entrepreneur. Now, I, I wasn't a new entrepreneur then. I had been an entrepreneur for a long time and I was used to building a business, focusing on sales and marketing and developing clients. And in fact, my newsletter was called Flourish because I had this concept, this idea that building a business successfully was about planting seeds and planting seeds inside the mind of prospects so that you could nurture them and they would grow. And as that idea, that desire, that excitement, that urgency for the product grew, you could close more and more business. So the idea behind Flourish is that you're always planting seeds in your business. And if you're not thinking about the seeds that you're planting today and tomorrow and the next day, you won't have a business. And so this idea of giving attention to um, something that at first is somewhat fragile and then nurturing it with water and light and um, nutrients and care and protection is what flourishing is about. And that is really what a business is about. And no matter what business you're in, whether you have the most beautiful products in the world or you have ordinary products, you have to go through that process. It is a process. And it's important to understand that this process is fundamental to any business, but in particular, we do not want to get distracted when we run a luxury business and focus so much 
on the thing, the beauty, the joy, the magnificence that we forget about planting those seeds, nurturing those seeds, and doing that over time. It is a process. Now, as much as I love the big luxury brands, the legacy brands, the brands that we know and love, one of the challenges with brands uh, in luxury is that the folks who work inside of these brands often do not understand and learn that aspect of the business. They are, in effect, living off of seeds that were planted long ago and that are nurtured by others and that they are benefiting from. The idea of doing business with these brands is often in the minds of the prospecting client already. They know about the brand, they've seen the brand, they've had it before. Um, big budgets of advertising and advertising and marketing are used to drive these brands. So what happens is, unlike an entrepreneur who is taking an, taking an idea, creating it, building it, protecting it, um, nurturing it, amplifying it, introducing it to others, defending it, all the things you have to do when you're building something that initially is fragile, that people may not believe in, that can easily die, can be swept away by the wind, can be overlooked, is not as significant as something over there. This idea is often not something that people in larger brands and people who have worked with larger brands understand like an entrepreneur understands. The entrepreneur wakes up in the morning and says, my goodness, I want to do business with Mrs. Jones. Um, have we followed up with Mrs. Jones? What could I send to Mrs. Jones to make her excited about working with us? What questions does Mrs. Jones potentially have? What else do I have that I can share with her? Oh, I have an, I, another idea that I can do something with her. Maybe this is a barrier in her, barrier in her working with us. And so the entrepreneur is always thinking about how do I nurture that seed? How do I grow that seed? The entrepreneur is not thinking of branding in an abstract sense, in a flowchart sense. Yes, there's, a, there's an understanding of the brand promise, if you will, but they're so connected to the people, the heartbeat of the client, that seed that they're nurturing, that they never ever lose a sense of it because that seed flourishing, blossoming, blooming, growing, has a lot to do with their success and their survival, frankly, particularly in the early days. And so this idea of understanding the business of luxury is so important, particularly for independent small brands. You don't need abstract ideas. You don't need to look at the market from the standpoint of being a big brand. You can learn from their creativity. You can learn from their poise. You can learn from their elegance. You can learn from their style. But there's something else that you need to understand, and that is the um, connection to making seeds grow, and of course, the idea of planting seeds continually. So this is crucial to you as an entrepreneur, as an independent brand, as a creative. This is something you have to understand and work on daily. And forgive me for saying this, but a lot of the branding stuff you see out there, a lot of the discussion about what you should do in luxury, you know, particularly people who are in the business, it's BS. Because 
what you must understand is how do you meet a payroll? How do you pay the rent? How do you pay the loan? And what do you have to do? Who do you have to work with? How do you have to work with them to do that successfully? You have a creative side of the business, which is important. You have a beauty side of the business, which is important. You have a service side of the business, which is important. But you also have a business. And the idea that somehow you can lay back and pretend you're Rolls Royce or pretend you're some brand that has existed for a long time, it's nonsense. You have to learn how to balance the idea of bringing forth all of the beauty and the joy of luxury and the service and the elegance and the attention and all of those things, but you have to close. And you have to find people uh, with whom you can close deals. So remember that you need to plant a seed, you need to help that seed grow, and that's something you can never, ever get disconnected from. That's something you have to do right now. So you might wonder, what is a healthy seed in your business? Well, a healthy entrepreneurial seed is a positive idea about your business in the client. It's an idea that solves a problem. And in order to get there, you must be open, you must be clear, and you must understand what problems you solve. And you must every day be focused on finding prospects, solving their problems. In other words, in order for your business to flourish, you must plant seeds, nurture those seeds, help them grow, and help them bloom. Every day, the question is, rain or shine, have you planted a seed? Have you cultivated a seed? Have you helped a seed grow? Did you follow up with Mrs. Jones? That's nurturing. Did you shed more light on the opportunity to work with you, the product that she's interested in, the experience she's interested in, some perspective on it? That's nurturing. Did you put it into context? Did you help her compare it with the other things she may be looking at? That's nurturing. Did you demonstrate that you are the best? Did you show her evidence of that? Did you give her testimonials? Did you reinforce your experience? Did you show the array of things that you do for your clients? Did you make it clear that you are top shelf in what you do? That's nurturing. And did you ask the client to commit? Did you ask the client to buy? That's nurturing. All of these things must happen in the business every day. My issue with the luxury establishment is that there's too much stargazing. There's too much ooing and eyeing about the product, the designer, the store, the display, the this, the that, the show. And um, today, business is more demanding. And there's more competition. There are more brands than ever. And I discovered many years ago when I got into luxury and, and first was working with larger brands, that the opportunity was with smaller brands. I also learned that the luxury establishment is so focused on the big brands, the celebrity connection, the celebrity uh, designer, the, the this, the that, the show, the, and so forth, that 
there isn't a lot of discussion on practical day-to-day -day issues that relate to one building a brand at that level. And it is why I have so many students from around the world in various luxury programs will come to me and say, you know, I took this course, I studied this and that, but I've been following you and I really like your approach. The approach is moving from the abstract and getting a true sense of the person that you are serving, the person you are serving, and what their needs are, what's on their mind, what's in their heart. It's, it's connecting to the person in a different way. What I would often do is make a list of people, six people, 12 people, 24 people that I want to be clients and go through that list one by one, have a conversation, email, drop something in the mail, send a text message, give them a call, understand what the issues are. Has this person seen the product? Does this person understand everything that they need to understand? Have I given them this background piece? Do I fully understand their questions? This is what you have to do as an entrepreneur to be successful. You cannot be successful as an entrepreneur, as an independent brand, even as a sales professional trying to build a brand and grow a brand when you are disconnected from the person. The person is what makes your brand and your business successful. Remember, it is a process. Remember, it is a process. Some entrepreneurs give little thought to how they nurture and care for the internal business vision that they have and how that translates into behavior their behavior and behavior with the prospect and client. So let me say this. You cannot build a business on an idea, on a, just a product, or just a service. That is not a business. You can only build it by creating an engine that serves the client consistently. And in order to serve the client, you have to be focused on understanding them, finding them, um, connecting with them, protecting them, advancing the relationship with them. You have to look at this like you are tending to a garden. You are growing a beautiful garden. And that cannot happen if you are just fixated on how beautiful this product is, how wonderful what this person is doing, how interesting this other person in luxury and what they're saying and how nice that is. You, you can do that for the rest of your life and you'll have no revenue. In order for you to have revenue, you have to find real people in whom you can plant seeds where you can nurture them, you can protect that seed, you can care for that seed, and you can grow in them, in real people, the desire to have your product again and again. It is a flourishing process, and I hope this analogy really helps you understand the way you have to look at what you do every day. Now, if you want to know more about how to do this, get in touch with me, info at andretaylor.com. I'll tell you more about how to do that in your business. Now, take a look 
at this video.